Bethlehem this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Pray that the Lord would uh, meet each of you at your deepest need today and that you would all uh, know and feel the love of, of the Spirit in our worship today. We are having uh, a way that we can also show that love uh, to those who are in need. Uh, the, the folks in the Bahamas that, as you know, have really been struggling if you've been watching the news at all. Uh, our district, uh, the Bahamas are actually a part of the Florida Georgia district. They're a part of our ministry here in Missouri Senate and Florida and Georgia. Um, and we have a sister church there, Missouri Senate Church, called Lutheran Church of Nassau on, on Grand Bahama. Uh, they actually did not sustain any damage they were a shelter, and the pastor, Pastor Sam Google, has been working with uh, with our district, with the synod, and with local authorities in getting help to those that are in such uh, desperate needs um, on the other islands. And so he's coordinating the efforts, and we are having a special offering today. I just like said on your heart to uh, uh, to give and to support them. I, I can't imagine the, the sense of loss that they have, and if we can help them at this time of need at all, uh, would like you to consider uh, helping them. There are two ways uh, that you can uh, contribute. One is through the Florida Georgia Disaster Assistance Fund, and you can send that directly. Um, you can write a check, and we can send it, or you can write it directly to, um, to, the, um, the check, to that address. Um, or perhaps, and there's information on this in the board from that way. And the other way is just to make out your check to Bethlehem and uh, earmark it or the mental line. Make sure you just put Florida Georgia Disaster System Fund. Either way, we'll make sure that uh, you know, it gets there and you get credit for that. Uh, also, this Saturday is the memorial service for Johnny Squire. Uh, that Memorial service was to have taken place three weeks ago with Hurricane Dorian and got in the way, so it was postponed uh, until this coming Saturday, the 28th. That service is uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning. There is no lunch in the family, it's a private event um, afterwards, but there is a memorial service Saturday at 11 o'clock. Also, um, when we're done, I've said this the last couple of weeks, but I want to keep letting you know about all the bread that we have. Don't worry, you're not taking it away from anywhere, anyone else. We do take it to the shelter for that which is not distributed here. Uh, but even the shelter says that there's more that they can use. So feel free, you're not uh, hurting anybody or uh, preventing anybody else from uh, having uh, a meal and having bread. So uh, feel free to go over and pick up any leftover bread. And our confirmation classes have started. Uh, my class is Wednesday at 5.30, and Pastor Nick's is on Sunday, so you will be talking about that. Uh, Sunday at 5.30, so it's a great confirmation class. Um, looking forward to it. We've got a great group of young ones this year, and uh, I'm excited. I think they're excited, too, actually. Um, so if you have a seventh grader or a seventh grader, and they would like to come, it's never too late to join us. You can always join us on the route in progress, whatever. Uh, we would love to have them. So, there's that. Um, going on, uh, also in that same age bracket, if you have a 6th, 7th, or 8th grader, or a 6th, 7th, or 8th grader, we'd like to go to the uh, Florida Georgia Middle School Gathering. That's going to be the first three days in November, that, that weekend. Um, if they are interested, uh, please have them see me. I've got an email I can send to anyone who needs it. We just need uh, registration to go early and prefer it by the end of the month. Um, so it can get us all rolling. Um, but yeah, that's a great time. So if you guys can celebrate here, take advantage of that. And then a little bit older if you're an actual young adult, uh, if you're part of a young adult group, uh, we are starting a Facebook based Bible study. We're going to be using the actual VLC Young Adult Facebook page as kind of the format for that. We're going to platform for that. We we'll still continue to get together and have fellowship opportunities. Um, but as far as a weekly thing, um, be sure to like the BLC Facebook, Facebook page if that applies to you. We'd love to see you there and have some online interaction as well as some in-person interaction. So, that's it. Sounds good.
Let's stand. Let's uh, share the peace of the Lord with one another. We rejoice. 
rejoice in the mercy of God's forgiveness. We will listen and speak to Him. <coughs> Having heard those beautiful words of forgiveness, let us stand and continue singing Jesus, my blood and righteousness. Godliness 
with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she used to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe, my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of, of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If then, you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth. You, or who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who are lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among you, among men, is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us now join together and confess our holy Christian faith to one another and with Christians throughout the world. In the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious life. He suffered and was buried.
may the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O God. Amen. The text for this morning's message is the gospel reading. It's an account of the manager. I'd like to draw your attention to these words the manager speaks to himself. Speaks to himself on after his, after his firing, so to speak. And he says, What shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. And finally, I will draw your attention to Jesus' concluding description of, and summation of this parable when Christ says, The master commended the dishonest manager. For his shrewdness. This is our text. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all. From God our Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are two kinds of pickles that are really great. The first is just a pickle. Pickle, pickle. Regular old pickle. They're crunchy. And, and and crisp and, and yet they're they're sour and yet refreshing. I love a regular old pickle. Raise your hand if you like pickles. Good, that's good. <laughs> I love regular old pickles. Just swallowing them up. And I can't prove it, but I think Jesus would agree with me. I bet if Jesus was standing here now and with his tonsils and taste buds and offering a pickle, he would just swallow it up. Can't prove it. But another kind of pickle that's really great is when your team is out on the field, your opponents are at bat, and you get the runner going from second to third cup between the shortstop and the second baseman. The runner is in a pickle. And it is great for your team. You're happy that he's caught in that pickle. Those are really the only two good kinds of pickles that I can think of. Because usually, being in a pickle is not such a great thing. If you are that runner stuck between the shortstop and the second baseman, you know it doesn't feel so good to be stuck in a pickle. Trapped, nowhere to run, and, and it seems like it seems like there's just no way out. The fellow in Christ's parable today knew that pressure. He was in a pickle. Jesus tells the story of a, of a wealthy lord who had a manager handling some of his accounts for him. Only the manager wasn't doing such a great job of that. Someone accused him of somehow being wasteful. And, and when word of, of that came to the wealthy Lord's attention, well, he told his manager to hand the books over. His days were done. He was being held accountable. So now, this manager is in a pill. What shall I do? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. And quick as a flash, he goes to those whose accounts he's managing. How much do you owe my master? A hundred measures. Quick, the manager says. Get your checkbook and write 50. And you, how much do you owe? And about a hundred. No, no. Get your checkbook. And write 80. And then, get this, the wealthy Lord applauded the manager for his shrewdness. In the words of Tim, the two man dealer, huh? <laughs> what is happening here? Well, I won't pretend that this parable is easy. It's probably the single most intensely debated of all Jesus' parables. But I think a few things are clear. Some basic things. 
The manager is in a pickle. He gets out. And the Lord applauds him for his actions. Let's just stick with those three basic things that we know. He's in a pickle. That manager gets out. And also, the Lord applauds him for his actions. So first of all, he's in a pickle. Whether you play baseball as a kid or not, you know what that's like. How often in our spiritual lives we get stuck in pickles? Or we think there's just no hope. Nowhere to run, nothing to do, no way to even begin to navigate the situation that we're in. Because we succumb. We succumb to our weakness or our shame. And we feel we are caught, stuck. That, that's almost what the manager did. He wasn't strong enough to dig, he was weak. He was too ashamed to beg. He wanted to. Avoid that shame. Weakness and shame can keep us trapped in spiritual pickles. A shame to cop to our reliance on that bottle or those pills, so we keep it secret. A shame to that internet addiction. But if people knew I looked at that sort of thing. Or, or maybe it's just this. Have you ever had this thought? Those of you who have a spouse, have you ever thought, well, I just can't do it now. I could not possibly humble myself and, and apologize to my spouse, saying I was wrong the whole time. After I've taken it this far, I can never confess or apologize now. I look weak. I can't do it. I'd be ashamed to look that way. Shame. Or maybe it is just weakness. We don't have time for a regular devotional life, so our spiritual muscles just atrophy. We become spiritually weak. And forget weekly, uh, weekday prayer and Bible reading. Now just getting to church every once in a while feels like a, a workout after skipping a meal. It's exhausting. And just like skipping workouts and skipping meals, the weakness becomes so perpetually a vicious spiral. No energy, no commitment, just weakness. But hey, you say, that may be me, spiritually speaking, at times, but that's not the man in the story. He got out of his pickle. Yes, he did. And I do want to talk about that manager, but. First, I want us to switch our focus for a little bit. We'll come back to that manager. First, what sort of man is this wealthy Lord? What sort of man is he? And I would suggest that he was a merciful Lord. Why? Well, well first, even though he affects that you're fired, he still gave the manager time enough to, to round up all of my individually and hash things out. You may 
feel trapped in spiritual pickles, and I don't want to diminish the, the serious implications they raise. But you need to know that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, God has already set the ledger straight. Yes, and there are things you should do. I'm happy to talk about them, but ultimately, you can't save yourself. You must rely on the mercy of the Lord. This pickle of sin, this pickle you can't get out of. But pickles are, after all, edible, consumable. And with his dying breath, Jesus Christ swallowed.
to faith, strengthened in faith, and equipped to live out faithfully their baptismal calling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For God's holy church here and everywhere, for those who have been called to serve as her pastors and church workers, for those preparing for church work vocations, and for those now considering full-time church work, that they may be guarded against the assaults of the evil one, encouraged in their callings, and prepared to serve faithfully for the sake of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this Bethlehem congregation, and for the work of the Lord given to us to do in this place, for our unity of faith and life in Christ, and for our faithful financial and prayerful support, of all that God has given us to do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our care and nurture of the children God has given to us, in the homes where our families dwell, in the churches, in our preschool and Sunday school, for those who teach our children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our communion this day upon the body and blood of our Lord, for hearts moved to repentance and faith, and for the fruits of this sacrament to be born in lives of holiness and righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the Congress, for our governor, for the legislature, for judges and magistrates, and for all entrusted with authority and given positions of leadership in our government, that they may serve well, act with integrity, and heed the voice of God's word in the fulfillment of their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and homeless, for the hungry and unemployed, and for victims of violence and prejudice, that the Lord would preserve them and grant them aid and relief from all adversity and trouble. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer, especially those living in the Bahamas and Houston, for those troubled in mind, for the grieving in their sorrows, and for the dying in their last hours, for the sick, especially those among us, Sue Aishan, Martha Fisher, Jeannie Roman, Matt and Joan Mattmuller, and Charlotte Cobb. That the Lord would grant them the comfort of his presence, relief according to his will, and peace in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, our God, whose mercies are new every morning, we give you thanks and praise for all your kindness toward us. And we pray that you grant us the will and the desire to worship you joyfully, to serve you faithfully, and to proclaim boldly your mighty acts of deliverance through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we offer to you these prayers, and who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
the same way also. He took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul and hold you steadfast in this one true faith now and unto life everlasting. Live and be part in that peace. Amen. Amen. Let us return thanks. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have sent Jesus to be our ransom and forgiveness. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us in this sacrament so that we show mercy to others. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. <coughs> The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.